the biggest challenge that our country is facing right now is a skewed ratio of between population density and the limited resources. We have a doctor ratio of 8 doctors for 10,000 people as opposed to 71 in Korea and 41 in Italy. We have one straight run hospital for 55,000 people. The biggest challenge that we are facing is the limited resources that we have in terms of our testing capabilities and in terms of our healthcare system. We have 127 ICMR approved government laboratories and 51 private laboratories. We have the capacity to do 13,000 tests per day and as on date, we are operating at 38% of our capacity. Well, testing is the first line of defense against this deadly virus. Korea, which was the second nation to be affected after China, managed to contain the virus without a complete lockdown just by doing mass testing. For a country of 1.3 billion people, how much ever we ramp up our testing capacity, our capacity is always going to be woefully short of the requirement. But what is on our side is first, the sun. Right now we are in the hottest months of the year and if we study the pattern, the occurrence of flu has always been the least in the months of April and May. Second, Indians are biologically much more robust when it comes to immunity. Considering the population dynamics in our country, we cannot bank on mass testing like Korea. We need to scale up the number of testing laboratories and uh, the manufacturing setups involved in the sampling and testing kits. The entire workforce involved in the healthcare system, testing laboratories, manufacturing setups uh, involved in making kits, PPE, sanitizers should be fully operational. Since we are not self-sufficient and we need to import a lot of critical raw materials, customs and airports should be open on all days for the next two months at least for the critical goods. Supply chain and logistics is a very important part of this chain and it needs to be agile and seamless. Instead of just focusing on the prevention, what we also need to focus at this point of time is what we can do in case we do get infected by the virus. The key is to keep the immunity high. First, by having a very good diet, rich in vitamin C and immune boosters. And second, by exercising and yoga. Traditionally, yoga has been a part of our culture. Surya Namaskar and breathing exercises like Kapal Bhati, Uchai, Bhasrika increase the Samat Pran in our body. Samat Pran is responsible for maintenance of warmth in our body. So even if you do get the virus, your body can fight it out. It will take four to six months for the vaccine to come out. Meanwhile, as responsible and conscious citizens, we practice self-isolation. We take good care of our body and health and keep our immunity high so that we do not burden our existing healthcare system. This is High Media's viral transport system. The kit consists of a viral transport medium. The kit also has one nasopharyngeal swab and one oropharyngeal swab. Our kit has been validated by National Institute of Virology. Viral transport medium has been designed to preserve the viruses, virus for up to 72 hours. The quality of the VTM is very important because if the virus degrades, then no matter how good your tests are, you will get a false negative result. The first crucial step towards testing is proper sampling. There are two sites from which a sample or a swab is taken. One is the nose and second is the throat. Now this is a nasopharyngeal swab. As you can see, it has a very thin and delicate shaft so that it can easily enter your nasal cavity without damaging the delicate nasal mucosa. You tilt the head backwards you insert the nasal swab into the nasal cavity so that it touches the posterior nasopharyngeal wall. 
And how do you know that you have touched the posterior nasopharyngeal wall? You will encounter a resistance when you touch the wall. You stay there for a few seconds, enough for the nasal secretions to be absorbed onto this highly absorbent flocked tip. You remove the swab with rotating motions, open the tube, put the swab, break it at a break point and seal the cap. This is an oropharyngeal swab. As you can see, it is slightly thicker and less flexible than the nasal swab. You again tilt the head backwards. You depress the tongue with a tongue depressor and put the oral swab inside the oral cavity till it reaches the posterior pharyngeal wall. You do not touch the sides of the oral cavity or the tongue or the gums and the teeth. It's a natural reflex that when you put the oral swab into a person's mouth, the person might gag but you have to keep the swab for sufficient time for the secretions or the proper scrapings to come on to the tip or the oropharyngeal swab. You again remove the swab, open the tube, put it back in the tube. If the oropharyngeal swab has a break point, you can break it or if it does not have a break point, you just cut it with a scissor and then seal the tube. Considering the shortage of the swabs and all the testing materials, it is okay if you have, you can take both the nasal and the oral swab. In absence of an oral swab, you can just use the nasopharyngeal swab to take both the samples. In that case, first you take the oral swab and with the same swab, the same swab you insert into the nasal cavity and then remove it by the same procedure and put it into the tube.